And now it's time for Ask a Tune. Hey doggy, do you own a lightsaber? Oddly enough, he does. I used it to slice bread in the 70s. Now, uh, how does this work again? You gotta use some force. Mm -hmm. Use both hands. Mm -hmm. Try shaking it up and down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so much for being suitable for kids. <laughs> you got it in my eye! <laughs> Whoops. I, I can't feel my face. Yeah, that part is missing. Uh, I'm gonna go to the hospital now. Yeah, go and call the wambulance. <sighs> Tones these days. Now you listen, Kyle. I need you to stop chasing tell around here. I've been getting tons of complaints from the women, and if I catch you doing it one more time, you're through. I mean it this time. Do it again and you're fired. You hear me? Fired! Spider-Man's, uh, eighth cartoon. I gotta admit, I don't know much about Bug Boy beyond what Conroy told me. Seems a little fuzz balls of hand or something. Which probably explains his inability to get a girlfriend. That is not true. Yeah, it is. You can't even land yourself an opposite sex clone. Now, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, Spider-Man. Well, anyway, we got this teenage superhero called Spider-Man. Real name, Peter Parker who lives with his gilf of an aunt in New York. According to Conroy, he lost his uncle in some convoluted ironic karma incident or some such, and now has a guilt complex that makes him do hero stuff. Peter's approached by Samuel L. Jackson to become a member of the super spy organization SHIELD, who is apparently sponsoring a military-run training program for teenage heroes. And instead of picking the Young Avengers or the Runaways, they decide to turn a bunch of adult superheroes into teens. Get your own review series! Anyway, I can't be bothered with their names, so I'm just gonna call them the hippie, the perfectionist, the jackass, and the black guy. Pretty sure they do have actual names, but given their flat personalities, who gives a hoot? Peter plus these idiots go around fighting supervillains, and the show doesn't seem to know how to balance superhero action with comedy. Seems they took a little page out of Family Guy's book when it came to gags. In fact, the more I think about it, 
The more this show seems like the unwanted offspring of Family Guy and Teen Titans. Yeah, I'm a spectacular Spider-Man. Wait, did you say you find Aunt May hot? Well, what can I say? I sat down to watch this, uh, regular show thinking, finally, a show that acknowledges that it's gonna be boring. And, uh, I was actually pretty excited for it. But they lied! Seriously, I can't go two seconds without some funky razzmatazz going on. So, the show focuses around these two totally gnarly dudes, man. There's this too cool for school blue Jay Mordecai, and, uh, his mentally incapacitated friend Rigby the Raccoon. Anyways, these two schmucks work as park groundskeepers and are always under scrutiny from their boss Benson, an ill-tempered walking gumball machine. Hey, I'm not gonna question it, so neither should you! So yeah, that sounds pretty regular, right? Watching a bird and a raccoon mow lawns all day is just about as ordinary as it gets in Cartoon Land, huh? Well, think again, Sally! These jokers couldn't tie a shoe without starting the apocalypse! Sheesh, I bet Goofy would be a more dependable gardener than these two! At least when he burns the place to the ground, he'll do it in style! Well, one thing's for sure, they like flailing their arms around and screaming at each other a lot. And that's pretty much what half of the show is about. This is why I prefer cartoons before we knew how to talk! So what's my opinion of the show? I hate it! How's that for a regular answer, huh? Now if you'll excuse me, I hear a bunch of angry fanboys knocking on my door, so, uh, I'm gonna go take cover underneath a sofa. Hey, Disney, what's going on with ya? First you make a show about kids with shapes for heads, then you buy 4,000 superheroes, and now you make this show. I had to check to make sure I wasn't watching regular show again. What happened to Disney cartoons looking like Disney cartoons? You're even changing the look of your old tunes. Oi! And I see this Gravity Falls is made by a guy who wrote for fish hooks and Flapjack. Wasn't aware that writing for mediocre Spongebob ripoffs was considered merit enough to get your own show. But hey, what do I know? Anyway, Gravity Falls is about these twins that form a straight guy and Jim Carrey duo. And they're spending the summer in this weird little town with their weird great uncle, known as Grunkle and idiot speak, Stan. As you can see, Stan is pretty much Carl Fredrickson if Carl were taller, less charming, less pleasant, and like to scam idiots. Stan watches over the kids, and on the side puts them to work in his tourist trap full of mutilated animals. Dipper comes across his weird book and starts noticing weird things happening around town. Such as a bunch of gnomes wanting to make his sister into their queen. Poltergeist with weird fursuit fetishes. And kid psychics trying to cut people's tongues out with scissors. Did I mention this is a Disney tune meant for kids? Anyway... We're still early on in this show's run, so I ain't got much to say, except you crazy kids will enjoy your crazy mystery shows. I bet the real mystery of this show is where the heck are the senses? Doggy's Gravity Fall review from last season was so popular, I decided I want to do one too. So first off, I don't agree with Doggy at all. I think this is the best cartoon that came out in 2012. I was skeptical at first because it didn't look like much, but by the third episode, the one with the wax figures, I was hooked! This show is fantastic! It's a really funny show with gags you wouldn't expect from a Disney cartoon, and filled with mystery and suspense. Let's talk about what's good. First, I like the whole big story arc concerning the mystery about the town. A lot of spooky stuff occurs, and I hope we learn more about the author of the three books. I think it's Old Man McGucket, whose mind got messed up by Bill Cipher. Man, Bill Cipher was so cool. I hope we see more of him, especially since he's tied to something big that's connected to a lot of the characters. 
Now, the show isn't flawless. Though a lot of the episodes are entertaining, I hope next season will focus more on a story arc and less on standalone adventures, since that's the most exciting element of the show. Also, I hope Seuss's stupidity will be toned down, as well as Dipper constantly pining <laughs> for Wendy. Though fun at times, it leads the characters to do stupid and selfish things that put their lives and others at risk. All in all, I love this show and I can't wait to see where it leads, as it left on a great cliffhanger. Will we explore new worlds next season? I'm going to tune in and find out. Great. Got a question you'd like to ask me or Doggy? Write it down in the comments section. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.